Tonight, Dropbox says it wasn't hacked, but all those usernames were stolen. Snapchat's plan to make some money, and Aereo asks the FCC for one more chance. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 193 for Tuesday, October 14th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and number two. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. The information is reporting that Snapchat is modeling the way that it wants to make money off of popular Asian mobile messaging companies like Talk and WeChat and Line. It reportedly wants to become a platform for other services like gaming or e-commerce. And the information also reports that the company is in talks with Stripe to integrate mobile payments as well. Okay, so what do Kakao Talk and WeChat in line all do? Well, they've introduced multiple internal and external services to their apps like games, e commerce functions, peer to peer marketplaces, sort of like eBay, plus a gifting feature so you could send someone physical flowers on their birthday while you're actually chatting with them online banking features as well, even specific branding functions for advertisers. Users can pay to receive messages from celebrities and clothing companies can chat with customers to help them figure out things like sizing. Speaking of Snapchat, the company has clarified in a blog post that there are third parties who have gained access to its API but aren't supported by the company. Elise Hu and I talked about this issue yesterday on the show. Snapchat says that it doesn't have a public API because it takes time to create an open and trustworthy third-party ecosystem. And until it does that, it's working with both Apple and Google to take down third-party apps that aren't data secure in both of those companies' app stores. Snapchat says that giving any third-party app access allows a developer and possibly a criminal to access your account information and then send information on your behalf. It's a no-no. But that doesn't help me if I don't know who might be using a third-party app and receiving my media. So it's not really good enough. Seems like having a private API that is actually private would be a great idea for Snapchat. Ireland's government has announced that it will make changes to its business-friendly tax arrangements by closing a loophole used by quite a few multinational tech giants. In recent decades, Ireland has enjoyed a bit of economic growth and job strategy based on low corporate tax rates and other incentives that make foreign companies like Google and Apple and Microsoft and Abbott Laboratories want to do business there. The Irish government is phasing out what's known as the double Irish provision, which allows corporations with operations in Ireland to make royalty payments for intellectual property to a separate subsidiary that is Irish registered. Now that subsidiary, even though it's incorporated in Ireland, usually has its home in a country that has no corporate income tax. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's just going to get harder for multinational tech giants in Ireland. Aereo, the streaming video service that lost its battle against TV broadcasters in the Supreme Court earlier this year, in the summer, in fact, is now looking for a longer-term victory in Congress. The Federal Communications Commission is deciding whether or not to extend regulations for satellite television providers, cable companies, and other multi-channel video providers, or MVPs, to Aereo, and other linear online video distributors. In a meeting last week, Aereo told the FCC that it would be willing to accept these regulations. However, it gets messy. By accepting the label of MVP, Aereo would also need to start negotiating with broadcasters over content or retransmission fees, which is exactly what Aereo's original business model was supposed to get around and avoid. An anonymous Aereo official tells the Washington Post, quote, this is a regulatory no man's land we're in right now. We need that regulatory clarity to move forward. This is not a good environment for any business to operate in without having a clear sense of what the rules are. I'll say. In your wearable tech corner of news for the day, let's talk about Fitbit. The company's original force fitness tracker was a disaster. Yeah, skin reactions actually forced the company to issue a voluntary recall and abandon all sales of the product. 
did not work out well, but it appears it's coming back. Gizmodo has obtained marketing materials that reveal a new Fitbit charge, and then another model called the Charge HR that measures not only daily steps and distance traveled and burned calories and sleep quality and even some smartphone connected features like caller ID, but in the Charge HR's case, even adds heart rate monitoring that will continuously, if it works anyway, track your heart rate all day, every day, 24 seven through a new Pure Pulse system. It's worth noting that Fitbit hasn't officially announced either the Charge or the Charge HR yet, but hopefully they won't be burning anyone's arms. Apple and Facebook are both offering an interesting new perk for female employees. Both companies will pay for them to freeze their eggs. Egg freezing can allow women to put their fertility on hold for a number of years until they're ready to become parents. But it's also very expensive. Costs can add up to $10,000 for each session, plus an annual storage fee of $500. Apple covers costs under its fertility benefit, Facebook under its surrogacy benefit, both up to $20,000. And actually women at Facebook are already taking advantage of the coverage which started earlier this year. Now, as you can imagine, this is a controversial company perk. Some say it levels the playing field for women in an industry that's dominated by males. Others say it manipulates women into working rather than raising children and that it's also not a guarantee of pregnancy later on. Well, we have a goodbye today. We want to say goodbye to Macworld, at least for the time being. IDG World Expo released a statement today that the Macworld slash iWorld conference will not take place in 2015. It is going on hiatus. No show, at least for an undisclosed amount of time. The show was previously planned to take place next March, which is already a little odd instead of its usual January, February timeframe. Apple cut off its Macworld affiliation with the conference in 2009 and things just kind of slowly wound down. A few weeks ago, Macworld cut down its uh, editorial staff to a bare minimum. Macworld's magazine also recently came to an end. The company's Mac IT Enterprise focused event will still exist in 2015, according to this announcement. But I think we can safely say it's the end of the Macworld era. Coming up, Google holds Android tryouts for dessert, starting with the letter L. And up next, I'll talk with Peter Bright from Ars Technica about the 7 million leaked Dropbox logins. What is going on there? But first, okay, let's say that you're in a, you know, your, your company's doing well, you're ready to hire, you've got some job postings, but how do you find the best candidates? That is sometimes the biggest issue with companies that are scaling up. Posting your job in one place well, that's a gamble. How do you know that you're going to find the best quality candidates at that one place? You want to cast a wide net. And then you don't wonder if there was some applicant that was just perfect for this job that just never saw your post. ZipRecruiter is your answer, my friends. It posts to over 50 job sites like Craigslist and LinkedIn and Twitter. And it's a single click, so you don't have to do a lot of work at all. You just post once. And then you watch candidates roll in that are qualified through ZipRecruiter's interface, which is quite easy to use if I do say so myself. No juggling emails. You don't have to you know, deal with people calling your office. You can screen candidates through ZipRecruiter, rate them, and then hire the right person fast. Right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. In fact, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Free four-day trial. Use it. Hire some people. The right people. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Peter Bright, the technology editor at Ars Technica. A technology editor, anyway. I guess there's a few of you. Hi, Peter. I'm the only one, actually. Oh, you are? All right. Yeah. So you've, you can claim you are the technology editor of ours. All right. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us on TN2 today. You wrote an okay. article, 7 million Dropbox username password pairs apparently leaked. Now, this story is confusing a lot of folks. I know last night, uh, my Twitter stream went uh, a little bit crazy with people saying, change your passwords, engage to, uh, to uh, um, factor authentication. authentication. Dropbox has been hacked. And I sort of said, well, this is the beginning of the end. If Dropbox is hacked, what, you know, what, what, what's the hope for security? Dropbox says today, we weren't hacked. So explain to us what's going on here. Well, nobody knows for sure. Uh, last yesterday evening, um, a bunch of posts were made on Pastebin claiming to be Dropbox usernames and passwords. Uh, a few hundred were posted, and whoever posted them said that just shy of 7 million, they had just shy of 7 million um, pairs of credentials in total. 
and that if they received enough Bitcoin donations, they would release them all. Okay, so it's sort of a ransom situation. Yeah, well, no, because normally in a ransom... Well, then they're whole, yeah, the sure. <laughs> it was all public. Back. Whereas in this case, they would be spread to all the world. So kind of a opposite of a ransom almost. But yeah, um, so it, it looked... Uh, people, uh, brave people tried out these usernames and passwords, and at least some of them worked, so they were apparently authentic. And quite, I mean, quite quickly, um, they started getting uh, notified that the passwords had expired. So Dropbox had done something to stop these accounts from working and force people to change their passwords so that they couldn't use the details off Pastebin. So if um, Dropbox says we weren't hacked, this has nothing to do with Dropbox, then is this a third-party application issue, uh, I guess similar well, to the yeah, one that Snap Drop Snapchat has been experiencing? It, it could be. Dropbox's statement is a, a little unclear, the, the, the public statement they've made. They, they made a blog post, and they, and they made a similarly worded, but not quite the same um, public statement, saying that, Basically, it's third-party services. So yeah, very very similar to, to Snapchat, where if you type in your Dropbox username and password into some other service, that service could grab your username and password. Um, unlike Snapchat, Dropbox does have an API, so this shouldn't... <laughs> Well-behaved apps that use Dropbox shouldn't ever see your username and password, um, the, the way the Dropbox API works. That shouldn't happen. But not all apps are well-behaved, and unscrupulous apps can potentially steal the username and password even if you're using the Dropbox API. So th there is a difference from Snapchat there where um, because Snapchat has no API, any app that sort of provides compatibility with Snapchat is always going to have to ask you for your username and password because that's the only way to do it mm. thanks to the lack of API. But the, that's not... That's not the only route that these things could have come from. Um, it's very common for people to reuse passwords, for example. And in, in one of the big leaks, such as the Adobe leak, where 150 million usernames uh, were leaked, or met, you know many others, um, a password can be leaked in one leak. And then people can try that same password and email address on a bunch of other sites. And... If you reuse your password, hey, guess what? It'll work on a bunch of other sites. So it could be that the passwords came from one place and, and whoever put these paste bin posts together tried them on Dropbox, found they worked. Yeah, I think, oh. I think uh, you know, when we're talking about the issue of Snapchat, it's easy for some people to sort of say, well, I don't use Snapchat, and that's just, you know, something that... It, you know, kids are using to send silly photos back and forth to each other. Dropbox is is a whole different thing. I mean, they're 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 sensitive information. People use Dropbox sometimes as their sole place to back up a lot of data about their personal lives. So going forward, is it really just a matter of don't be the person who has the same usernames and passwords across multiple services, whether it's Dropbox or anything else? Obviously, uh, turning on yeah. a two-step verification is helpful, but. You know, how, do, how, does, how do we stop it, talking the, about it's, this? It's the same advice that we get every time this happens. If a site has two-factor authentication, turn it on. Don't use the same password for every site and use a password manager so that the, the actual passwords themselves are very long, very random, very difficult to remember, but also very difficult to crack. And they're just stored in an application on your PC or your phone. Um, but you know, it, that's the same for every site. Um, you should be doing that for Dropbox or for Hotmail or for Gmail. Uh, you should be doing it for Snapchat. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's going to be the same story because it's kind of the same problem every single time. My last question for you, Peter, is particularly with Dropbox, because it, it, it really is a cloud service pioneer of sorts, at least as we know cloud services to, to operate today. How much responsibility do companies have to make sure that they offer the absolute most, uh, you know, sort of foolproof ways to secure your data when they, they have to know that many of their users 
just aren't responsible enough or don't understand technology enough to do it themselves? Well, there's not a whole lot they can do. Um, that, that's the problem. Dropbox has no way of knowing if you've reused your password. It's, you know, short of Dropbox trying out your same password against your Hotmail or Gmail or whatever, the company has no way of telling. And, and they can they can strongly advise you not to reuse your password and to make sure that it's a strong password. But there's not a whole lot they can do to force it. Um, the the best thing, I, I mean, they can, they can make sure that, you know, the usual rules, like your password has got numbers and symbols and things in it. But that means that you're just going to choose password one exclamation mark and that's your secure password. Mm-hmm. And... And it's really difficult for the for the companies to force people to do things better. Well, hopefully, uh, at least some of these very public issues coming to light will, will at least point people in the right direction. We, we yeah, can all, we we could only hope I, anyway. I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> that is uh, that is our Dropbox story for today. I wish it, I wish it, would, it seemed brighter, but uh, but <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's uh, please please people. If there's anything that you learn from the show, it's to use one password or last pass and 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 turn on two factor auth. Peter Bright, thanks so much for joining us. Peter Bright uh, is a technology editor over at Ars Technica, and you also have a great Twitter handle. What is it? I am Dr. Pizza on Dr. Twitter. Dr. Pizza, that's so good. I wish it was mine. Uh, tell folks where they can uh, read more of your work. Uh, ArsTechnica.com. Uh, well, mainly there, uh, and yeah. Well, slightly more irreverent on Twitter and slightly more serious on on Ars Technica. Perfect. It's a perfect combination. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Finally, I mentioned next version of Android is right around the corner. Many people are breathlessly awaiting it. But what dessert is it going to be named after? We're on to the L's. In order to drum up a little anticipation and have a little fun, Android chief Sundar Pichai tweeted out a video of various desserts that are trying out to be the official name of Android's L release. Lemon meringue pie, lava cake, lemon drop, perhaps lollipop or licorice. Ew, I hope not. Google has also released several ads for Android this morning, and it's building up to Android's next big release. What do you think it's going to be? Please don't make it licorice. It's so gross. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. Please do that if you like to get the show delivered to you without you having to think about it every day. And write us at tn2 at twit.tv with any feedback you might have for us. We love feedback. Don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you right here, same time, same place tomorrow. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com. <laughs>